Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, the one and only, you guessed it. Now, stab right there. Anyways, <laughs> I'm joking with y'all, man. Listen, uh, this is a new series. Um, it's specifically teaching models, but I'm going to have a little twist to it. I had a little, you know, a little creative moment. Um, so I had uh, posted in the community channel. I was like, yo, if I make a, a video about models, we'll be some cool names, like. Not that whack stuff like, oh, break on structure or the block model. Forget that, all right? We talking about, you know, names. Just names, cool names. And I was like, you know what? Somebody give me a cool name. And so a bright person in the uh, chat, you know, was like, hey, well, why don't you name them after Greek gods? And I was like, man, you just gave me ideas. So I was like, yo, how much Greek gods are there? And then I was like, hmm, let me look this answer up. So I looked it up and I was like, oh, there's 12 Greek gods. And according to Greek mythology, and I was like, oh, shit. So that was like 12 models. So that means like if I make a model per month and let that marinate like I do with the rest of my stuff in the video so y'all can learn. I was like, man, that's enough content for a month. And I was like, all right, you know what? For an, an entire year, I can make a model every month. So I was like, man, this can help me make more videos. It won't keep. The video's dry. It will be something new every time. So I was like, you know what? Let me just make this video here. And then I was like, all right, cool, 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 cool. So we made this video. So anyways, the first Greek god or the first model is named after a Greek god himself called Orion. Orion is the god of hunting. So how does that make sense with trading? Man, you already know we hunt for them setups, man. We hunt for them A-plus setups. And every model that I present to y'all, is basically a A plus setup, or it could be an A plus setup if you make it, you know what I mean? But anyways, let's go to it. Let's get to it real quick. So model one, Orion, the hunter. Cool, cool, cool. So obviously, your boy Siri A. Fetch and the uh, honorable credits. We got ICT and my boy Kish, man. Love them boys both. Very, very valuable people. And uh, if you don't know who they are, I have uh, the link in the description below and uh yeah man let's get to it boom y'all already know the famous page on my channel is the risk disclaimer page y'all better be very careful when y'all trading any asset class because listen if this is your first time trading man there's a lot of risk in here so do not skip this part if this is your first time okay all right on to the next one so boom Alrighty, let's get to it. Alright, Orion. So, obviously, this is an introductory page of who Orion is and what does he stand about. And a little bit of, uh, I have at least 10 fun uh, fun facts here about Orion. And uh, that way we could, you know, learn a little bit about Greek mythology. So, I was like, you know what? Maybe this is my time to learn about Greek mythology. And I was like, man. I mean, I know a little bit about it because I've played, you know, games and stuff that had to do with it. Like, you know, God of War and all that stuff. But, like... And I've seen the movies and stuff like that, but, you know, it's time for me to dive deep with y'all, and uh, let's see how we can make this a creative thing, all right? So, I hope you guys enjoy this the way I'm enjoying this, all right? So, boom. Orion. So, here's Orion. Obviously, um, very handsome man. Pause. Alrighty. Um, yeah, man, but he's, uh, he was known as a handsome god, and, uh. He's known for hunting, as y'all can see, and, and he's right now in this picture, he's in the stars. And so you guys would understand, well, in a bit, you guys are about to understand why he is in that type of form, like in a star form, which is called a constellation. And it's because he was uh, he was made a constellation by Zeus, and that's that was his death. Uh, he Him and Scorpius, the man who was sent, uh, well, the god who was sent to kill him, the scorpion who was sent to kill him. So anyways, we got the fun facts here. So he's a hunter, all right? So his father is Poseidon. You guys know who Poseidon is. Dribbity, drip, drip. A god of the sea. And then we have Urali. And I don't want to butcher some of these people's names, man. But I know. But yes. I mean, some of these gods' names. But yeah, I might butcher some of them. So don't don't make fun of me, all right? So Urali is uh, actually a gorgon. And uh, if y'all know how Medusa is, she, obviously I have it there. Medusa's sister. Medusa's sister is a um is one of them snakes. She got the uh, living hair, which is like the snakes that are all venomous and hair and stuff like that. And so, yeah, 
So those are called Gorgon sisters. Um, and yes, so she's a monster of the underworld. You rally, and Poseidon had a baby, and the baby is Hunter. All right, Hunter obviously could walk on waves. He could walk on water. Why? Because his father is the god of sea. So obviously, if he gets his genetics, he's able to do that. You know what I mean? So he was hired by King Enofen, Enofen to kill the ferocious beasts that were terrifying the inhabitants of islands. Kaios. Uh, is it Kaios? Kaios. I'm sorry. I told y'all I'm going to butcher this. All right. But again, this is new to me. The same way it's new to y'all. So uh, he was promised by um, Enofin, his daughter, Mirope, if he got rid of the animals and the island. So basically, they had like a little agreement where Enofin was like, yo, listen, Orion, if you could kill all those ferocious beasts, I promise you my daughter. And y'all going to be like, man, what does that have to do? With listen, Orion was in love with Mirope. So, he was like, man, if if I do this for you, Enofin, can I have your daughter? And pretty much he was like, I promise you my daughter if you get rid of them. The like, hell yeah. I hell yeah, I'll let you be with my daughter if, if, if you get rid of those animals. And so, that's why he was encouraged to kill all the wild animals on the earth. So, he hunted with Artemis. And her mother, Leto. And Artemis was another hunter, I believe. And Leto was the mother of Artemis. And Gia was the god of Earth. And so she sent a giant scorpion, which is Scorpius, which killed Orion. Uh, the reason why she did that is because she disliked how Orion was arrogant about how he would kill all these beasts. And how he had this pride and how he's going to kill all these beasts because he's so in love with me, Rope, you know, you know, all that stuff. So she was like, uh, you ain't killing none of these beasts. And a matter of fact... I'm going to send you the wildest beast, which is Scorpius. And, uh, you know, he died. And then, obviously, Orion was turned into a constellation by Zeus, meaning he was sent, he was turned into, like, this star. You know what I mean? Like, that's why when you have, like, the the uh, gold dipper and you look, you know how people look up to the stars? Oh, that's a gold dipper. Yeah, well, you could do the same thing with Orion. Look, that's Orion. And so, uh, it's said to believe that Orion, when you look up to the sky at night and you see the stars, Orion has the most brightest stars. So when you see like the most shiniest stars and the most like shiniest stars and that that's part of Orion. So I couldn't tell you I haven't seen it yet, but I'm I'm learning. Okay, I'm learning. Do not make fun of me. All right. And then Orion means that the winter is coming. All right. We're in winter, and winter is here. Okay, Jon Snow. Now let me stop. Anyways. So the components to this model, man, is this is extremely important. So the, the way I'm trying to do this is I'm actually going to break this up into uh, multiple videos. That way you guys can understand each process by itself. And you guys don't try to put everything together so fast. So that's the whole point of this. And why I'm spreading it in uh, the course of one month, all right? And I'm just letting it sit there and marinate. That way y'all get the understanding. Now, I'm not trying to do this like, like normally I do... Or when I'm active on YouTube, I try to do one video a week. But what I'm, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, one video a week. But what I'm trying to do is, since I don't want y'all to, I'm not going to drop just every week a video. And then, you know, the end of the month comes and then I move on to the next model. Nah, I don't want to do that because then you're going to be like, oh, it's, you're overwhelmed. And it's also going to entice y'all to do like Netflix runs. And this has nothing to do with Netflix. This is a skill that you got to learn slowly. And, and you got to take the information and understand it and back test it and forward test it and then come with statistics for it. Data. Okay. That's all it is. All right. So anyways, the first component to this model, obviously, is identifying a draw on liquidity and the best case scenario. And I'm going to show you all what the difference is between both. And uh, I'm going to help you all understand how to um, find a draw on, li on liquidity and what the draw on liquidity really is. And so then we have the second part, which is not today's video, but... You know, we're going to keep reading these, uh, of course. Um, identifying the breaker structure that stems from the order block. All right. And then the third component to this model is identifying filters. And some important factors are, you know, low resistance liquidity run, confluence, which is a PDRNS, which now y'all know because ICT just dropped the video. And uh, stop and entry refinement. So like your stop loss uh, placement and your entry uh, as well, you know, and how we can refine to smaller time frames. And the taking partials, man, it's also an extremely important uh, factor to this because I feel like most models work, but people put too much, too much faith into it and they don't realize like they, they could be paying themselves. Like, 
let it work for you and awesome if it works for you it works for you you get like 20 pips yeah but like take some partials at least so that way you can help yourself be profitable and build actually you know positive data for your your data you know what i mean like you know who says it hurts to pay yourself at 15 pips 20 pips you know what i'm saying you're still getting paid you know what i mean and uh, you're taking uh you know risk off the table and then you're also managing the risk better so What's the problem with that? All right, I don't know why some people are so like, oh, I gotta hold this position all the way because I'm, I'm throwing money on the, you know, I'm leaving money on the table. No, it's not that you're leaving money on the table. It's just that you're doing the right thing. That's all it is. All right. So obviously today I told y'all we're just gonna talk about liquidity. All right, and uh, here we have the drawn liquidity. What can the drawn liquidity be? So you have the old high, old low, which is external. It could also be internal as well. But the reason why I really put external because I want y'all to think about the highest high and the lowest low that are on the left side of the chart, okay? Then we have a fair value gap, which could be internal or external. And I'll explain how could that be internal or external. In reality, it's always going to be internal in the, in the large scope of things. But if you have a short-term high and then a fair value gap on top of it, then it makes that fair value gap, according to the range that you're uh, using, it makes that fair value gap external. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'll show you guys what that means. Uh, later on, I got we got a couple uh, images that can help you all uh, understand what that means. And then obviously we have the short term high, which is a uh, intermediate high inside of a dealing range or a trading range. All right, cool. So obviously, low resistance liquidity runs versus high resistance liquidity runs. Again, y'all should know these things because ICT is dropping all them gems on uh, with the core content. So man, again, prerequisites: take your goofy head to uh, you know where to ICT's channel. I'm sorry for calling y'all that, but uh, it is what it is. Anyways, listen. So um, low equals original con uh, so a low resistance liquidity run equals a original consolidation without a stop hunt okay and then a high resistance liquidity run is an original consolidation with a stop hunt and y'all see what I, yeah 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 we'll see what i mean stop rushing me okay all right so then here we have the rules and filter um if high resistance liquidity run that's what the hr stands for don't ask me if hr which is high resistance liquidity run uh use order block so what i mean by that is if you have a high resistance liquidity run, let's say that you're in a short, right? It happens to be that there's a breaker at the bottom. Y'all can either get out at the, so let's say you're entering at premium and you're trying to get out at a discount, but in discount, there's a high resistance liquidity run, all right? You, you see the high resistance liquidity run signature, which is pretty much a breaker. If y'all see that, then uh, what I would say is either take profit exit at the breaker or the lowest down close candle okay that's literally the best strategy to uh finding or a fair value gap the fair value gap right before the um stop hunt okay and y'all will see what i mean again i know it's it's hard to picture these things if you don't actually understand what i'm talking about so let me help you guys understand in a bit hold on just give me a second if low resistance liquidity run, expect an external run. So if you guys see that there is a low resistance liquidity run, always expect an external run. Now, that doesn't mean that that's where you're going to pay yourself. That's going to be the first and only time you would pay yourself. All right. If there is a low resistance liquidity run, I'm telling you guys, expect an external run. So always assume the best case scenario, but also pay yourself in the most low hanging fruit draw of liquidity. Okay. Y'all see what yeah y'all y'all see what I'm saying? All right, look. So only trade with a defined draw or terminus, and bias precedes price, meaning it comes before price. Bias always comes before narrative always comes before price. Okay, price doesn't come. So the patterns that you guys see in price doesn't come before your bias. Okay, if the higher time frame order flow says it's bearish, always assume that the model that you're looking for has to be aligned with a bearish goal you know what i'm saying like your entry should be like a, to a bearish order block bearish breaker it should always be something bearish all right uh, bearish fair value gap uh, that would be a fair value gap that's in premium like you know always 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 make sure that you're following the higher time frame order flow because if you don't it's gonna bite you in a booty and y'all don't want that to happen all right 
So look at this. So here, obviously, we have buy side liquidity. And I'm going to tell you all why the buy side liquidity is the best case scenario and why the low resistance liquidity run is a low hanging fruit. OK, so you can clearly see. Right here, this is a. High and then we have a lower high, if, if this one makes sense to you, you can do that one or you can do this one. All right. Or even these two right here, a lower high. OK, and so it's a high and a lower high. This is a low resistance liquidity run. OK, and then if you had paid yourself here, right, you guys would be pretty much. Um, not waiting for these 15 to 20 pips to be um, absorbed between here and here. OK, so you would have just took your profits here at this lowers this liquidity level right here, which is about 65. I'll say 65.15. Right at 65.15, you would have paid yourself right here. And then um, best case scenario, if it would have reached above here, like if it would have came here, then boom, that would have been your best case scenario. But you had this right here. And then you guys are going to be like, well, you were talking about partials. It seems like you're only showing me the drawn liquidity in the best case scenario. All right, listen. So if I already had predetermined that this was bullish, let's just say for some reason, right, I was able to get in here. And yes, you are, right? Because this is an order block that starts an expansion that breaks structure okay and then when we come back down into it right here you could be a buyer okay so where is your partial points well you have your partial point right here number one right and if you guys wanted to refine it to this high you guys can because they're fairly relatively equal highs so you could have been right here partial number one so when it got up here this candle right here when this candle came right there that was your first partial you would have took off like 25 percent 20 percent 30 40 depending on how your risk management model works um you know for me i would have took off 30 percent right here and then once i took off 30 percent that was just to uh for me really what it is is when i take the first 30 percent it's just so i can feel at peace that i had paid myself already so if it goes against me i got something out of it and it wasn't just for nothing, okay? So I'll take 30% off here. And then you could choose like this high, this high, this high, this high. These are logical levels to take profit at. So for me, this level right here, I would have paid myself here. And then I would have just let it run to there, okay? So these would have been like my levels, all right? Because if I, you, I mean, you could choose this high, but then again, it's too close to this high. So like, why would you want to do that? If like... If you're waiting for this high, like to pay your second partial, then you might as well just wait for this uh, low hanging fruit scenario right here. But for me, it is just that like this high right here is kind of like at the midpoint between this high right here and this high right here. So I would pay myself right here. It just makes sense for me. OK. And uh, if you take from this high to this low 50 percent, this is the high at 50 percent okay, of this trading range. So this is why this one makes sense to me. And I would have paid myself there as my second partial, another 30% or 20%, okay? Then the last remaining 50% uh, that would have ran on would have went to the low resistance liquidity signature. And then if I felt, uh, if I felt jolly, we would have gone up here, all right? So next. Alrighty, so. This is a high resistance liquidity run, and you guys are seeing something very, spe there's something very, very specific about this right here. So at one point, this high right here, or these highs, were considered external range liquidity in this range, right? And so price came and took, had a shallow run on it, and then we came below again, right? And then we had another stop run here. All right, like the Indian runs, we had one, two, three. So a lower high, a higher high, and a higher high after that. But the whole point is, is that at one point, this was an external range. And this high resistance liquidity run signature happens to be above that external range liquidity. So do you think 
that price is likely to go above this? I don't think so. Especially after the fact that once, once this high resistance liquidity run forms, we break structure here. Okay, we break structure right here. And we also have a shift on market structure right here. Okay, and then you obviously see that this order block right here starts this expansion lower. And then price comes back inside this order block and this previous high and goes lower. Okay, so I put a note here and it says realize how price is delivered every time it has. I forgot to put it. it. See, we have some typos there. So realize how price is delivered every time it has a bullish impulse versus a bearish impulse. So you guys can see. So when we have these bullish expansions higher, they're very muddy, very choppy, very muddy. Same thing happens here. We're, we're, we're trying to go above this external range high, but obviously it's acting like a brick wall. And then you see a consolidation here, then boom. And then you see price here just going back and forth, back and forth. And then once we get these expansions lower, you could see how clear they are. All right. And then we go back into this fair value gap. Again, shift in market structure right here. Fair value gap filter. You could be in, uh, short here. And then this order block right here breaks structure here. This order block creates an expansion, breaks structure here. Once this up candle trades back inside of this order block and the fair value gap discount level right there. You could be short right here. And then you see how price respects this order block here that start this that starts this expansion. And in fact, I think what it's really respecting more is not just this order block, but really the fair value gap. And it just re keeps reclaiming this level right there, the discount level with the order block, the mean threshold and the fair value gap. And it just keeps going in. Boom. Dying. And you see how every time it has a impulse to the downside, you see how expansive prices and not so choppy versus when it's up it has a lot of manipulation so like here it's going down down and then manipulates and goes back up and then goes down and then every time we take out liquidity here goes back up and but you know it just it's just a mess but every time we're going lower it seems like it's just one uh it's trending in, in, in one direction and it only cares about going down in one direction. And then we have another order block here that breaks structure. Once again, price trades back into there with the fair value gap and you could go short there and then you have another aggressive expansion there. Okay. But you could obviously see that high resistance liquidity runs does not help you uh, get to your target. So in other words, if you were bullish here, right, for some apparent reason, it doesn't matter what the reason is, but let's just say you had um, reasons to be bullish, all right? Um, why would you try to have your exits here, like above this? Because the reason why this is a high resistance liquidity run is because price already took liquidity on this side. It took it here once, and then it took it again. So why would you try to be a buyer and 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 have price go above this like you're you would be imposing your will because price already took liquidity you see what i'm saying so like why are you trying to take price above this sometimes you'll find that if there's a high resistance liquidity run in discount and price is bullish order flow is bullish and there's a high resistance liquidity run in discount obviously you rather have high resistance liquidity run form and premium because that makes more sense. All right. But obviously, if there's a high resistance liquidity run, but then above it, there's a fair value gap and then there's more highs and it's in discount like this is just another high. So just be very clear of that and know when to use the high resistance liquidity run signature to your advantage to get information, correct information. At least I don't want you guys to just every time you guys see a higher, higher, like a breaker formation, you guys are like, oh, yeah, yeah, price is not going to go above that because it's a high-resistance liquidity run. No, it can. If the high-resistance liquidity run is formed at discount, there's more reason to price wanting to seek fair value above it. So be very clear on that. I apologize. I had like a little burp there. All right. So then I believe this is the same. Oh, it's not. It's not the same at all. All right. So, yeah. So here we have... Uh, 
obviously a range, right? And you could consider this an original consolidation here, right? We have an expansion, order block, that break structure here, right there. You could be long here. And then you obviously see how price reacts there. Whoop. Break structure again. Order block before the expansion that breaks this structure right here. This is a short term high. On a smaller time frame, it looks it would look a lot more clear. So this break structure. Then we have a fair value gap. Order block buying right here. And you could buy it there. And then obviously, look, we have a high resistance liquidity run. Why do you think price didn't go here? Why do you think that price took out sell side liquidity here and didn't go all the way above here? Because number one, the bias on this pair, which is AU, is bearish. And um, this high resistance liquidity run was formed in premium after taking external range liquidity. So what does this make this? This is just really a manipulation, right? Because if this is really the external range liquidity, right? And this high resistance liquidity liquidity run forms here above this external range then all of this is is manipulation so then you see price expands lower boom and then we take out sell side liquidity next all right and so what this just pretty much means to me is that this breaker that forms here which is another form of an order block so when i say order block it does not only mean an actual order block all right there's types of order blocks which are breaker blocks right mitigation blocks those are order blocks okay but obviously, some of you guys don't understand that. But I hope you guys start understanding that because um, that's just how it is, okay? So we have this high resistance liquidity run here. And then we have a breaker block, okay? But I want you guys to pay close attention. Forget the fact that there's a breaker here, okay? But just look at the delivery here, okay? Price comes down here, all right? Then we have a fair value gap right here. Price keeps going lower, 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 lower. Cool, cool, cool. But why isn't that price pierced inside of this area right here? Well, because inside of from this low to this high, this range in price is balanced. Why? Because we have buy side, sell side, buy side, sell side, buy side, sell side, buy side, sell side, buy side, and then sell side. All right, to rebalance all of this in here. But this right here is a balanced price range. And then this right here only embodies sell side delivery. So it's a Sibia. Sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. So you'll see that price has a small dealing range when we take this low right here. All right. And with this small dealing range, this will give you another reason to go long. I know you guys have been asking me in the community, oh, teach me how to do a dealing range. Teach me how to do... All right, look, this is a range that takes both sides of liquidity. Ready? This low right here gets stop hunted. All right, so this is just a manipulation. And then price goes above. So sell side is taken first, then buy side is taken after. So what does that mean? This gives you an opportunity to go long because the order which liquidity was taken was sell side first, meaning this right here creates a high resistance liquidity run. So why would this low want to take out this low? Ah, right. So then price obviously takes out the buy side after. You could be very aggressive and take a low risk buy right here. I wouldn't recommend that, but you can, okay? But what I would do is I would just wait till both sides are taken, right? So if sell side was taken first and buy side was taken second, I know that buy side is going to come again. So it's just going to be a, another buying opportunity once we hit either the premium level, the equilibrium level, or the discount level of the dealing range, okay? And then boom, price comes up here. And then we go into that SIBI. And obviously, you see how price reacts there. We have these closing bodies right there inside that internal range liquidity and of course we have a stop point right here and then price another daily range look at this this right here would be another dealing range it'd be a high and a low right and then obviously the high is taken first and then sell side is taken here then another high resistance liquidity run is formed 
And then you can sell right here. That would be your reclaimed order block. Okay. And then boom, you can sell it right there. And then also pay attention here. The discount level, again, remember how I told you premium, equilibrium, and discount. The discount level of this dealing range right here gave another entry if you would have entered that discount right there. And it had this little impulse. Obviously, you would just have to know that if the bias is bearish, if everything is saying and screaming it's bearish, it's bearish. If you're looking for any long opportunities while the market is bearish and it's just a short term bullish opportunity, you have to be very quick. And you also have to be very aware on where you're going to take your exits. Like, where are your exits? Because if you just trade hoping that because you let the dopamine hit you and you're like, oh, I feel so good that I caught this long entry here and it's literally zero drawdown. I think that price is going to go here. So now you're just trying to impose your will and you're ignoring the information that is provided in front of your chart. So you guys have to be very aware of that. So if I were to take this long right here, I'd be very quick. I, I know that the whole point of this long would just to be to get to right here. And then I can enter right here to go short. This is a dealing range. This is a range, um, uh, a ranging range, right? And then we have a, a stop hunt, and then we have a dealing range. So we have a range, stop hunt on that range, and then a dealing range, and then SIBI, premium, sniper, boom. And then we also have liquidity to pair our orders with, all right? So you have breakout artists putting their buy stops here, and then they get activated, and then we enter right here to pair our orders with those who want to go long, we short right here. All right, so, you know, a little saucy information right there for y'all. There's a lot to take in right there. But let's go on to the next slide. I don't want to make this video too long. And uh, obviously, another thing is we have a low resistance liquidity run right here. And so once the actual SIBI gets filled in, you guys can see, we have immediate reactions lower. And then price comes back inside of this dealing range. Again, 50% from this high, this low, 50%. Boom. Reclaimed order block. Pretty stuff. And then low resistance liquidity run. We know that price is bearish. Boom. We keep going lower. So, I normally have a quote at the end of the video, but today's video is going to end like this. It's, it's called focus, okay? This is just the word focus and the definition of what it means to focus. And I, the reason why I have this here is not only for you guys, it's also for myself, all right? Most importantly, myself. As much as I love you guys, I also pretty much do these things for myself as well because I love doing it. Um, it makes me happy and it makes me happy that I'm able to impact you. So it's like a double, you know, it's like a, it's like a double edged sword. Like I, I get best of both worlds. I get to help you guys out. And I get to help myself out. Right. But lately I've been feeling like I have been out of the loop and I haven't been as focused as I could be. And the reason why some of the things I want in my life take longer than expected is because I don't put enough focus into it. And what do I mean by that? All right. So obviously the definition of focus is very clear. It says, the center of interest or activity, right? And then it says the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition, um, adapt to the prevailing level of light and become able to see clearly. So I have a nice quote here by the Hermoses, which is place. Wow. I really did that. I, I said, place your all your damn like, oh, sorry. My dog is going crazy. Um, but anyways, yeah, so place your, all your, that made no sense. So it's place your marbles all in one jar. Okay. And that's pretty much the Hermoses. Uh, they got it from one of their mentors, but I'm just reiterating it. Um, you know, information quotes get passed all the time and I really take it from them all the time. You know, they're just very impactful. If you don't know who Alex Hermosi is, take, do yourself a favor and, and watch his videos and watch his wife's videos, Layla Hermosi, man, a life of impact. All right. But pretty much what I'm trying to say is. And the way they explain it is, it is it's exactly like this. Um, you know, you probably got distracted and you probably followed somebody's lifestyle. And then you said, oh, let me get mentored by these people. Uh, let me, let me, uh, I found out about this new thing uh, in e-commerce now. So let me go into e-commerce. Okay. Now let me go into e-commerce. But the thing is, you haven't fully achieved what you want to achieve with trading. And so you're like, 
ah, I like e-commerce. It sounds like money. Ah, you can make a lot of money. Da, da, da. See, the thing is, no matter what you do, I've come to a conclusion that you can make money no matter how you want to make it, all right? The problem is, is that we're so quick to run to the next industry just because we hear about somebody's success story. How about you create your own success story in the same industry that you want to create it in? So if you if you want to create a success story in Forex or, or trading, the trading world, why don't you just focus on trading? Why do you have to try to uh, live up to somebody else's standards? You have to hear about somebody else's success story for, and then you go to their to their industry and then you, you're you just delaying the process of you getting to where you want to be with trading. You see what I'm trying to say? So I had a beautiful quote that I posted on my Twitter, which is, for those who always ask about profitability and consistency, I think it comes down to believing that trading for living is possible and letting go of the external fear factors and allowing yourself to place all your, marble, uh, all your marbles into the process. Submit and you will see. All right. And then I put hashtag I am possible. Shout out Kish. All right. Um, but a lot of people don't understand this. Profitability is not about, you know, He's a special person. He has different genetics from me. He's taller than me. She's more prettier than me. He's more handsome. He has green eyes. She has blue eyes. He has purple eyes. It doesn't matter. It's not about the person. You know, obviously, it, it is about the person to a certain extent, you know, about their discipline and stuff like that. But it's also about, like, you and, like, what you decide to, to like, it's your focus. It really is the attention that you're putting towards this. Um... Obviously, you control your attention, so I guess it is about you, all right? It, it is about the person, but, you know, the only way you could become profitable and have a paradigm shift, as ICT explains in the first month, and have that paradigm shift to make this a possible thing, is if you put the time that you need to put into it, because you have all your marbles placed everywhere. You have your marbles over here. You want to learn how to cook now, so now you've been taking three hours out of the day to learn how to make a damn meal. Stop that. You can, you'll get there. Just stop. Just choose one. You know, do you want to cook or do you want to trade? You like photography or do you like trading? Uh, do you want to be a, a freaking philosopher or a trader? Like, choose one. You're obviously, you know, you have a life ahead of you. And you're, you're able to, you know, do whatever you want at any given time. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is if you guys focus and place all your marbles into one craft. And then once you master that craft, you can move on to the next. You'd be undefeatable. You'd be possible. You'd be in different levels in your life. You know what I'm saying? And I say this to myself as well because I find myself getting distracted a lot by other things. That And you guys do it innocently. I do it innocently. I'm like, yo, that person's like, man, like e-commerce sounds good. Like, damn, some people, are, a lot of people are killing it with these stores and, you know, drop shipping and all that stuff. I'm like, damn, I should try it. But the thing is, I'm not at the place that I want to be with trading. So it's like for me to go and make that move to e-commerce before I'm actually done with trading is is crazy. And so that's the law of life. It's it's one of the 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 law of, of power which is, you know, focus on one thing. All right? Once and once you can uh capitalize off that one thing, then you can go out to different ventures because now you already know what works. You already have found you you have found what works and you've become consistent in your process with whatever it is that you mastered. You see what I'm saying? So that's all it is. Just place all your marbles in one spot and uh, allow yourself to, uh, you know, reap the rewards of doing that. You know what I mean? So uh, we're going to have the next video and it's going to uh, obviously about to be the second part of this model. It's not going to be posted probably in the next three days. So don't ask me questions. Oh, when are you going to post the next one? No, it's going to be posted in the next three days. Uh, just uh, wait and let this one marinate and understand what high resistance liquidity runs are and um, how and low resistance liquidity runs and how drawing the liquidity on where price is going is very important, all right? And then just practice on looking at how setups pan out when it's low resistance liquidity runs versus high resistance liquidity runs, okay? But if you guys could always find a, a low resistance liquidity run while you're trading, like, bro, that means A+. plus. Like, that means that you literally have the lowest amount of friction getting to your profits like that's literally all it means so if i were you guys i would take this video very serious and i would rewatch it rewatch it and rewatch it but anyways
Thank you for watching. I think I stole 40 minutes of your time, but that's okay. If you guys want to learn, you guys come to learn. If you guys want to complain, then you guys complain. But I see y'all. It's been y'all boy Siri, and I'm out. Bang.